What's happening guys? My name's Nicholas Renault and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how to manage data projects. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so there's five key steps you need to consider whenever you're working on any data project. Now this includes data projects that are revolve around data science, reporting, business intelligence, building applications. These steps can be applied to all of those different facets. Now the five key steps that we're going to be going through in this particular video are fast planning and how to collect business requirements super quick, how to set up a Kanban board and actually work with user stories, how to plan your project sprints and what a sprint actually is, how to work with standups and daily meetings, and last but not least, how to take everything that you've done and translate it into documentation that maps through as a traceability matrix as well. So that wraps it all up. Now let's kick this off and take a look at fast planning. So fast planning is really a way to quickly capture business requirements and what your users actually want out of this particular project. Now the way that this particular step works is by getting all of your project stakeholders in a room and giving them some sticky notes. Then in a time box period, what you're gonna get them to do is write down what they want on that sticky note and place it on a board. Once that's been done, you'll have a group lead or a moderator, ideally someone with a little bit of experience in running data projects to group these sticky notes together into different themes. From that, you're then going to be able to create user stories. Now, when you're doing this fast planning process, ideally there's a couple of key things that you wanna think about. So you wanna take a look at data security and permissions as well as application security and permissions. If you've got calculations or if you've got machine learning models involved, you ideally wanna work out what those calculations are beforehand and whether or not you've got any benchmarks for accuracy or thresholds for accuracy. You also wanna take a look at your UI and flow as well as any reporting you might need. You'd also want to consider reconciliation. So if you're pulling data from different sources, you want to make sure that that reconciles from your base to your application. And then the last thing that is always good to take a look at is importing and exporting. So whether or not you've got to bring in data and export it out. So take a look at that and think about that during your planning process. So this takes us to step number two, user stories. So in this particular step, you wanna consider user stories as well as the Kanban board. So we'll actually take a look at Trello in a sec and how to actually manage these user stories. Now, first up, what is a user story? Well, a user story is basically a business requirement, but it's got a little bit more context to it. Now these tend to work a whole heap better than a standard business requirement or a standard technical requirement because they give context to what is actually being asked. Now in this case, a user story has three key components, who, what, and why. The way to write a user story is by starting off with as a who. So in this case, it might be as a business analyst or as a data scientist or as a manager. I want to what? So in this case, you might want to build a prediction model or you might want to generate a report or you might want to reconcile against something in order to, and then this is where you specify your why. So your why is really why you're trying to do something. So it might be in order to inform stakeholders. It might be in order to do something faster. It might be in order to perform a particular process or get something done. So these user stories give a lot more context as to what you're actually trying to achieve. So in this case, an example might be, as a business intelligence analyst, I wanna report on sales in order to inform the leadership team. Or say, for example, you've got a machine learning focus, so as a maintenance engineer, I want to use computer vision to detect defaults in a particular pipe or something in order to plan for maintenance. So user stories add a lot of richness to what you're actually trying to do. Now let's take a look as to how you'd actually set this up. So in order to manage user stories, I tend to use Trello. So you can access Trello by going to trello.com. And again, I'm not affiliated with Trello. I just find it super easy to work with and set up. So in order to set up your board and set up your user stories, all you'd need to do is scroll up here, hit the plus sign to create a new board. And in this case, you can select create board and then we're going to title our board. So in this case, say our project is to do with uh, predictive maintenance. We type in predictive maintenance, choose our background because that's important and hit create board. Then from here, you can start to create a number of different columns. Now these columns are gonna represent all the different stages a user story is within, within your sprint. Now let's build out these columns and then we'll take a look at how to do it. So in order to create a column, all you need to do is add in a title. So in this case, our first one's gonna be backlog and then hit enter. So I'm gonna speed through, create the rest of the columns and then we'll take a step back and take a look at what those columns actually represent.
All right, so those are our columns set up. Now let's start off by actually adding some user stories. Now to add a user story, all we need to do is hit add a card and then type in what our user story is. So I've got a couple, let's start off with those. So in this case, our first user story is as a maintenance engineer, I want to review pipeline defects using computer vision in order to detect issues faster. Now keep in mind that our user story had those three components. So who, what, and why. So in this case, our who is a maintenance engineer. Our what is I wanna review pipeline defects, so this section here using computer vision. And our why is in order to detect issues faster. So what we can then do is just hit enter and that will add a user story. Now let's add a couple of others. So now we've got three user stories. So we've got as maintenance engineer, as a support manager, and as a business intelligence analyst. Now, if we wanted to flesh one of these out, so these are user stories obviously gonna give us our overall what we wanna achieve, but you tend to going to want to have some tests that are attached to this particular user story. Now to add some tests, what we can do is hit checklist and then title that test, and then we can add our tests. So in this case, we've got four tests for this particular user story. So we wanna report in a PDF format. We only want our leadership team to have access to this. We should be able to see defects by month. And then last but not least, we wanna be able to reconcile back to our production data source. So we can add these tests in by just typing these out and hitting add. So let's add them in. Okay, so those are our tests added. So you can see that we've got each one here. Now what we can also do is assign a team member. So what you might do in this particular case is assign your developer, you might also assign your tester, and you might also assign your business analyst. So everyone that's involved in this user story, ideally you want to have them attached to it. Now let's take a look as to how you'd actually progress this through each one of our columns. So we've got a couple of columns here. So backlog to do doing, testing, changes required, blocked, done, and archived. Now, during your sprint planning process, you'd start to work out what user stories you want to achieve in a particular sprint. Now, those user stories are going to be put inside of the to-do column. So this is everything that you want to achieve during a particular sprint. Now, as part of that planning process, you'd also step into your user story and you'd work out how much effort that particular user story is going to take. So in this case, we tend to use t-shirt sizes, so small, medium, or large. Ideally, you wanna work out how long or how much effort is involved in that particular user story. So in this case, we're gonna say this particular user story is small. Now, once your developer starts working on it, they're going to grab that user story and drag it into doing. So from this particular column, they're going to work on it and they're going to build it out. Now, ideally, what you wanna have as a result of the development being complete is testing instructions that you can then pass to your tester. So this is going to work really well later on when we get to documentation. So once your developer's done building this out, they can then attach some documentation by hitting a, stepping into the user story and hitting attachment. Then in this case, I've already got some documentation. Now in this case, this particular evidence that we've attached is self-documenting. So you can see that it actually includes steps for how to test this particular user story. So in this case, we might choose what columns we wanna display, then update our X and Y axis, and it also includes what we expect to see. So results are displayed in tab one. So by doing this, you're able to pass through testing steps to your testers, makes it a whole lot easier to get through this flow a lot faster. So our evidence is now attached and our developer is now done. Our developer can then also add a, a comment in and then tag the person that they want to test. So in this case, I'm just gonna tag myself so we can hit comment under our evidence then attach or mention our user and say, ready for testing and hit save. And then what you can do is now that our developer's done developing, they're going to grab this card and move it into testing. Now, if our tester finds no issues, then what they do is they'd grab this card and move it into done. If there's additional changes required, then they'd move it into changes required. So this just makes it a lot more visible for testers and everyone involved to see what's had a run at testing, but potentially need some changes. Now, if there's issues blocking a tester from actually going through and testing that, they'd move it into blocked. Now, in this case, we're gonna mark it as done. And once that's done, after the sprint, what we'd actually do is move that particular card into archived. And then we can actually archive that list so that we can pick it up later and it doesn't mess up our board. Now, that's really how to manage your user stories. Again, we've got a couple here, so we can move them through this particular step. 
And ideally what you want your user to do is tick off these testing steps as well. So they've tested that, they've tested that, they've tested that, and they've tested that. So everything works. Alrighty, back to our slides. So that really covers our user stories and how to manage your user stories. Now the next thing that you wanna take a look at is how you plan your sprint. So your sprint is basically a time box period that you're going to use for this particular project. So really it basically allows you to condense what you're going to try to get done and focus on what you actually wanna achieve. So there's a couple of key components to any sprint. First up, you wanna set your sprint period. So this might be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Ideally, those numbers tend to work pretty well. And then there's a couple of key parts or things that you wanna do within your sprint. So every day you wanna have a stand-up meeting and we'll take a look at the structure for those stand-up meetings. But basically, this is where you give an update as to how your particular component of the project is working. And you wanna have a showcase, a retrospective, and a planning session. So within your planning session, you do that before the next sprint starts. And this is where you take all of your user stories from your backlog and you'd move them into to-do. So everything in to-do is going to be what you're aiming to achieve within that sprint. Then within your stand-up, you're gonna have your developers, your testers, your business analysts working through those user stories. And ideally towards the end of the sprint, you're going to have a showcase. This is where you show back to the broader project stakeholder community what's actually been achieved within that sprint and you demonstrate evidence that you're actually making progress. After that showcase, ideally what you wanna do is have a retrospective. So this is where you look back on the project, you evaluate lessons learned, you update your incident and risk register and you basically work out what you could have done better, if anything at all. And then again, you start your next planning process. So that really is your sprint in a nutshell. Now a core component in your sprint is the stand-up. So your stand-up is really just a daily fast meeting with a team. Now this gives you the ability to work out what's actually happening with the project and allows you to quickly see evidence that it's moving along. Now ideally you want this to be really, really quick because you don't want to take too much time away from the project. So each member tends to have five minutes and five minutes only to give their update. And the update really takes the form of tell us what you've done, what are you doing and if there's any blockers. But again, you wanna keep these stand-ups short and sharp. Now, the last thing that you wanna do as part of your data project is documentation. So we've gone through all of this effort to grab user stories and provide testing evidence. This is where it all comes together and you're able to demonstrate that you've actually achieved a user story. So within your documentation, ideally you can just have any Word document or Google Sheet. Ideally, you just want it to be something that you can take away later on and review as part of the project. Now, what you're actually gonna do is you're going to leverage the user stories that you've already written. So in this case, you can see our three user stories and you're just gonna use the testing evidence or the development evidence as part of documentation. So this allows you to reuse all the stuff that you've done as part of the project. So rather than having to go and rewrite documentation as a completely separate step, which often leads to missing information, you can take that testing evidence and use that as part of your documentation. In that way, it's self-documenting and allows you to trace back each user story to the system and to how that's actually been satisfied. And that about wraps it up. So in those five key steps, we've taken a look at everything you need to do in order to run and manage a data science project. And that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. And let me know in the comments below what types of projects you're working on. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.